Please stand and join in singing our gathering song, number 777. Here I am, Lord. 777. I Lord of sea and sky, I have heard my people cry, all who dwell in dark and sin, my hand will save. I who made the stars of night, I will make their darkness bright. Who will bear my light to them? Whom shall I send? Here I am, Lord. Is he thy Lord? I have heard you calling in the In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Peace be with you. Amen. Well, good afternoon, everyone. I'm Bishop Jim Sherman, Auxiliary Bishop of the Archdiocese of Milwaukee and Vicar General of this northern part of the Archdiocese. Very, very pleased to be with you this evening as we celebrate something very special. Uh, 75 years of priesthood, of Father Ed Sipple, and not to mention uh, 100 years his birthday. Just amazing. And as we enter into these sacred mysteries this evening, let's pause for a moment to call to mind our sins and failings and to ask for God's mercy and strength. Lord Jesus, you gather your people into the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ Jesus, you summon us to follow you on the journey to Jerusalem. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord Jesus, you are the path to eternal life. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of good will. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you, we give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly 
King, O God Almighty Father. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Lord Jesus Christ, only begotten Son, Lord God, Lamb of God, Son of the Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father. Have mercy on us. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. For you alone are the Holy One. You alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High. Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen, amen. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. Let us pray. O God, who the strength, through, O God, who through the grace of adoption chose us to be children of light, grant we pray that we may not be wrapped in the darkness of error, but always be seen to stand in the bright light of truth. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the Book of Kings. The Lord said to Elijah, You shall anoint Elisha, son of Shaphat of Abo Melana, to pro as prophet to succeed you. Elisha set out and came upon Elisha, son of Shaphat, as he was plowing with twelve yoke of oxen. He was following the twelfth. Elisha went over to him and threw his cloak over him. Elisha left the oxen, ran after Elijah, and said, Please, let me kiss my father and mother goodbye, and I will follow you. Elijah answered, Go back. Have I done anything to you? Elisha left him and, taking the yoke of oxen, slaughtered them. He used the plowing equipment for fuel to boil their flesh and gave it to his people to eat. Then Elisha left and followed Elijah as his attendant. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our responsorial psalm is number 30. Number 30. We'll sing refrain number three. You are my inheritance, O Lord. You are my inheritance, O Lord. Faithful God, I look to you, you alone my life and fortune. Never shall I look to other gods, 
you shall be my one hope. You are my inheritance, O Lord. From of old you are my heritage, you my wisdom and my safety. Through the night you speak within my heart, silently you teach me. You are my inheritance, O Lord. So my heart shall sing for joy, in your arms I rest securely. You will not abandon me to death, you shall not desert me. You are my inheritance, O Lord. A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians. Brothers and sisters, for freedom... Christ set us free, so stand firm and do not submit again to the yoke of slavery. For you were called for freedom, brothers and sisters. Do not use this freedom as an opportunity for the flesh. Rather, serve one another through love. For the whole law is fulfilled in one statement, namely, you shall love your neighbor as yourself. But if you go on biting and devouring one another, beware that you are not consumed by one another. I say then, live by the Spirit, and you will certainly not gratify the desire of the flesh. For the flesh has desires against the Spirit, and the Spirit against the flesh. These are opposed to each other, so that you may not do what you want. But if you are guided by the Spirit, you are not under the law. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. from the Holy Gospel according to Luke. When the days for Jesus as being taken up were fulfilled, he resolutely determined to journey to Jerusalem, and he sent messengers ahead of him. On the way, they entered the Samaritan village to prepare for his reception there, but they would not welcome him because the destination of his journey was Jerusalem. When the disciples, James and John, saw this, they asked, Lord, do you want us to call down fire from heaven to consume them? Jesus turned and rebuked them, and they journeyed to another village. As they were proceeding on their journey, someone said to him, I will follow you wherever you go. Jesus answered him, Foxes have dens, and birds of the sky have nests but the Son of Man has nowhere to rest his head. And to another he said, Follow me. But he replied, Lord, let me go first and bury my father. But he answered him, Let the dead bury their dead. 
but you go and proclaim the kingdom of God. And another said, I will follow you, Lord, but first let me say farewell to my family at home. To him, Jesus said, No one who sets a hand to the plow and looks to what has left behind is fit for the kingdom of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Well, once again, good afternoon, everyone. I'm very pleased to be with you this evening. Uh, earlier this afternoon, I was in uh, Walworth County uh, with uh, some of my extended family. Uh, I was asked to do a blessing for my aunt and uncle who are celebrating 70 years married. And my uncle uh, is turning 90 years old. And so I, I did the blessing and uh, the family was very moved by it all. And uh, my cousin said to me, uh, how are you going to top that? And I said, <laughs> wait till this evening. <laughs> it is really remarkable to be able to celebrate with you, Father Ed, 75 years of priesthood and 100 years of life. It is a great honor for me to be here. The readings that we heard this evening speak of God's call to each one of us that call to discipleship, that call to follow. Have you ever gone through a, a period in your life where you weren't sure where you were going, what direction to take, and wondering if you were on the right path? It may have been in college and you weren't sure if the course of studies that you chose was right for you. Or it may have been at work feeling dissatisfied with your job and, and not being sure about how and when to make a change. It may have been in a relationship with your potential future spouse, wondering if you're making the right choice and fretting about commitment. It's not uncommon, at least at some point in life, to feel a bit of confusion, a lack of surety, and a, a need for some direction. Well, the readings that we've just heard this evening speak about the call to discipleship, the call to commit to the faith, the call to follow the ways of God more closely. And they speak to us of how certain people respond to the call. Some are able to respond to the call through commitment with their lives, while others waver. The first reading is taken from the first book of Kings, and it's the story of Elisha. Elijah, the great prophet, knowing that his time on earth was growing to a close, had to choose a successor. And following the Lord's command, he chose Elisha. And Elisha made a wholehearted commitment to follow Elijah as his attendant and then later to become his successor. He asked only that he might take leave of his family. And he went with his oxen and his plow and he broke up the, the plow equipment for fuel. He slaughtered his oxen and had a feast for his family. The slaughtering of the oxen and the, and the breaking up the, of the plow to be burned demonstrated in a symbolic way that he was making a break with his past and committing himself fully to serving the Lord, responding wholeheartedly to the call of Elijah, the prophet of God. In today's gospel, after having much success in Galilee, teaching the people, curing the sick, 
expelling demons and proclaiming the kingdom of God, Jesus decides to begin his journey to Jerusalem to enter into his passion and to take up his cross. Jesus walked ahead of his disciples and they followed. They followed his lead. There were others who wanted to follow him as well, but none of them really understood that Jesus was on his way to his death on the cross. In this gospel, Jesus teaches them the demands of discipleship as he continues his journey. As he makes his way to Jerusalem, he tells those who would follow him, in effect, come on, let's get moving. Let go of the past. Don't look back. Keep your eyes fixed ahead. Don't subordinate your calling to your own wants and needs. Don't place conditions on your response. Free yourselves of worries to pursue a greater good. Place your trust in God and not in earthly comforts. Sacred scripture tells us that Jesus had nothing but the Father, and he instructs his disciples to be ready to possess nothing but the Father's love and the promise of salvation. In today's second reading, taken from the letter of St. Paul to the Galatians, St. Paul speaks of the importance of standing firm as disciples of Christ. Christ has set us free from the slavery of sin, and we must never again submit to the yoke of slavery. We are to live free under the guidance of the Holy Spirit. As Christians, there's always that danger of losing that freedom if we give in to the ways of the flesh, fall into idolatry, or live in discord with one another. True freedom has nothing to do with any of those things. True freedom is the freedom to serve others through love. St. Paul exhorts us to remain free from sin, loving God and one another. Well, today we, we celebrate in a special way the anniversary of one who answered Christ's call to discipleship. Father Ed Sippel was born in Fond du Lac in July 1922 to Louis and Della Sippel, who raised him in the ways of Jesus, leading through their example with volunteer work such as at St. Vincent de Paul. He attended St. Lawrence Seminary in Mount Calvary for high school and during his time there decided to enter the priesthood. After completing his studies at Milwaukee's St. Francis de Sales Seminary, he was ordained on June 7, 1947. And before arriving at St. Patrick Parish in Fond du Lac, um, the later, uh, which later became part of this parish, he got there in 1971, before that, he, he served in West Allis, Racine, Milwaukee, and Waukesha, as well as teaching school and uh, religion class in school at, in various schools in Milwaukee and Waukesha. For 20 years, then, he served in St. Patrick's and became a much loved leader in this Fond du Lac area. Throughout the years, of course, he celebrated many weddings and baptisms and funerals and first communions. Even after his retirement in 1991, Father Sippel continued to guide people in their faith by offering mass when called upon and acted as a chaplain at the Congregation of the Sisters of St. Agnes as well as helping to maintain the garden there. Father Ed, thank you for your ministry and your service. Thank you for your example of faith and discipleship. It's a great honor to be with you today. Happy birthday. 
happy anniversary, and may God's blessing be upon you always. And at this time, uh, I would like to call forth uh, Father Jim Lobage. He has a message uh, from Archbishop Listecki. Unfortunately, Archbishop Listecki could not be here. He really wanted to be here, but he's presiding over a wedding, and that wedding was planned a long time ago. So I am here in his stead as the vicar for senior priests. We have 130 senior priests in our archdiocese. They live all over, and one is 101. Father Ed is 100, and there's another 100-year-old coming up in 10 days. Then there's a dozen that are 90 years old. So I've got quite a bit of work to do. <laughs> so, dear Father Sippel, writes Archbishop Listecki, it is with great pleasure that I write to you and offer you my congratulations, best wishes, and promise of prayers as you celebrate your 75th anniversary of ordination. A lot has changed since 1947, both in the church and in our world. But one thing that has not changed is your call, your fidelity. The people who have benefited from your ministry over the years are countless. For this gift, I say, thanks be to God. Peace be with you as you mark this anniversary and blessings to you and all who gather with you in celebration. Fraternally yours in Christ, the Most Reverend Jerome Edward Listecki, Archbishop of Milwaukee. And Father Ed, the Archbishop, is going to present you with a, a kind of a plaque, a certificate. It says, with the assurance of prayers and invoking God's abundant blessings upon Reverend Edward Sippel on the joyous occasion of his 75th anniversary of ordination on June 7th, I offer heartfelt congratulations and best wishes. Given at Milwaukee, Wisconsin, on this 27th day of April in the year of our Lord, 2022. Most Reverend Jerome E. Listecki, Archbishop of Milwaukee. And let us now recite the creed. I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, consubstantial with the Father, through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation, he came down from heaven. And by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and life of the world to come. 
Amen. And putting all of our faith and trust in the God who calls us to follow, let us lift up our prayers and petitions. Our response is, Lord, hear our prayer. <clears throat> For the church, the body of Christ, that our eyes may always be focused on our world leaders, that they may find constructive and productive ways to settle differences without resorting to violence and disaster. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the faith community gathered here today, that we may all become followers of Christ in both our actions and our words, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who be traveling these summer months, that they may travel in safety and find you in the beauty of creation, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those at crossroads in their lives, that they may recognize the movement of the Holy Spirit and be willing to be guided by the Spirit, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who have died this past week, Robert Norton, Sister Sharon Christ, Susan Rosenmeyer, Carol Voigt, Stefan Westick, Roger Sippel, Michael Lefebvre, Paul Ledarnu, and Thomas Schneider, and especially for those who remembered at this Mass, the anniversary for David Sr. and David Jr. Boulet, in celebration of Father Sippel's 75th ordination anniversary and his 100th birthday, and for those that have no one to pray for them and for the poor souls in purgatory, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Good and loving God, we ask you to bestow on us always the gifts and the blessings that we need to be true disciples and to follow you more closely. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Number 790, the summons, 790. Will you come and follow me if I but call your name? Will you go where you don't know and never be the same? Will you let my love be shown? Will you let my name be known? Will you let my life be grown in you and you in me? Will you leave yourself behind if I but call your name? Will you care for cruel and kind and never be the same? Will you risk the hostile stare? Should your life attract or scare? Will you let me answer prayer in you and you in me? Will you let the blinded see if I but call your name? Will you set the prisoners free and never be the same? Will you kiss the leper clean and do such as this unseen and admit to what I mean in you and you in me? Will you If I but call your name Will you quell the fear inside And never be the same Will you use the faith you found To reshape the world around Through my sight and touch and sound in you and you in me 
Lord, your summons echoes true when you but call my name. Let me turn and follow you and never be the same. In your company I'll go where your love and footsteps show. Thus I'll move and live and grow in you and you in me. Pray, brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. O God, who graciously accomplished the effects of your mysteries, grant, we pray, that the deeds by which we serve you may be worthy of these sacred gifts, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with Lift up your hearts. To the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere, to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For through his paschal mystery, he accomplished the marvelous deed by which he has freed us from the yoke of sin and death, summoning us to the glory of now being called a chosen race, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a people for your own possession, to proclaim everywhere your mighty works, for you have called us out of darkness into your own wonderful light. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim. Holy, 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 Lord God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise, for through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you, by the same Spirit, graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread. And giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal co covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me.
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray, upon the oblation of your church, and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself, grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son, and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. Make of life an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, the Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles, and the glorious martyrs, and with all the saints. And as we pass in intercession, in your presence we rely with unfailing help. In the sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, in advance to the salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, with your servant Francis Carpool, Jerome, our bishop, the order of bishops, all the clergy, and the entire people. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen, 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 amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, and graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. 
Let us offer each other the sign of peace. God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not that you should enter under my life, but only say the Lord. Our communion song is number 938. We come to your feast. 938. We place upon your table a gleaming cloth of white, the weaving of our stories, the fabric of our lives, the dreams of those before us, the ancient hopeful cry. The promise of our future, our needing and our nurture, lie here before us. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. 
we come to your feast. We come to your feast. With the fruit of our lands and the work of our hands, we come to your feast. We place upon your table a humble loaf of bread the gift of field and hillside the grain by which we're fed we come to taste the presence of him on whom we feed to strengthen and connect us to challenge and correct us, to love in word and deed. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. With the fruit of our lands and the work of our hands, we come to your feast. We place upon your table a simple cup of wine the fruit of human labor the gift of sun and vine we come to taste the presence of him we claim as lord his dying and his living his leading and his giving, his loving cup outpoured. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. With the fruit of our lands and the work of our hands, we come to your feast. We gather round your table. We pause within our quest. We stand beside our neighbor. We name the stranger guest. The feast is spread before us. You bid us come and dine. In blessings we'll uncover, in sharing we'll discover your substance and your sign. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. We come to your feast With the fruit of our lands and the work of our hands We come to your feast
we come to your feast. We come to your feast. The young and the old, the frightened, the bold, the greatest and the least. We come to your feast. We come to your feast. We're the fruit of our lands and the work of our hands. We come to your feast. Let us pray. May this divine sacrifice we have offered and received fill us with life, O Lord, we pray, so that bound to you in lasting charity, we may bear fruit that lasts forever. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please be seated. Well, Father Ed, on behalf of the Holy Family Priest team, I just want to offer our congratulations to you as well. Uh, it's uh, been humbling to follow in your footsteps. Hopefully I'm doing you proud as, uh, as our pastor here and one of the many pastors who have served uh, in the Fond du Lac area. Just very grateful for all that you've done for us over these past years. And uh, just it's amazing to... Um, to see the ways in which you've touched so many lives. Five years ago, when you celebrated your 70th anniversary, it was that same year that I did a, a wedding anniversary for a couple that you had married 50 years before. <laughs> I was in shock. I said, I can't believe. <laughs> like, you were a seasoned veteran priest of 20 years when you did their wedding. Bl uh, wedding. So... I was just, uh, I was amazed at, at how incredible that was. But just a word of thanks to all of, uh, all of you for your support as well of, of Father Ed over the years, Betty Korber, Catherine Abler, uh, Janet Zarin, and Michael Schaefer. I know you guys worked hard on the, uh, organizing this, so we just thank you. And there were many others on that list. I know I'm probably forgetting quite a few, but just thank you. Um, to the Brunettes, Greg Brunette, I know you served uh, many, many years ago when uh, Father Ed was at St. Pat's, right? And uh, you saved, uh, served for him, and, and you're back today, so thank you 
very much for that. A special word of thanks to Bishop Sherman as well. Thank you for your continued leadership in this area, your collaboration with Archbishop Listecki, and to the vicar for senior priests, Jim Lobaz. Thank you for all that you do for our archdiocese in service to our senior priests. God, God willing, someday you'll be able to serve me as a senior priest as well. Mm -hmm. So it would be, be a wonderful thing. So... <laughs> Um, I, I uh, do not want to steal the, um, the significance of this occasion, um, but we are also celebrating a 50th wedding anniversary for Agnes and Michael King. Uh, you're celebrating 50 years of marriage together, so I do want to extend a special blessing to the two of you as well. So if I could have you come forward at this time. There are just a few announcements. Uh, on Wednesdays, we will mark. On Wednesday, we will mark the patronal feast day of Saint Peter Church, the Solemnity of Saint Peter and Paul, with a special 8 a.m. Mass. Please join us after the Mass for a donut and coffee social as well. As a reminder, there are envelopes in your pews if you would like to support the Missionary Fraternity of Mary. We thank you for your support. Are you or someone you know struggling with grief? Sign up for our support group, Grief Share, which we will run on Mondays from July 11th through October 11th. Participants can attend at any time. Contact Gabby at the parish office to sign up. Join us as we celebrate our nation's independence with our 4th of July Mass at 8 a.m in the Holy Family Prayer Garden. Please bring your own chairs to the Mass. Please note the parish office will be closed in observance of the holiday on Friday, July 1st, and Monday, July 4th. Help teens learn more about their relationship with God as they participate in fun activities this summer at the Life Teen Camp in Georgia with our envelope fundraiser envelopes marked with various dollar amounts that are hanging on the bulletin boards in the back of church. Select an envelope and place in it a donation of at least the dollar amount on the envelope. Then return the envelope to the parish office or place it in the collection basket at Mass.
All those who have uh, wedding anniversaries in the month of June, please stand for a blessing. Yes. Good and loving God, we ask a blessing upon all those who are married in this month of June. We ask that you renew their commitment, help them to live faithfully in your love, and give them always your blessing. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Please rise. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow down for the blessing. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go and announce the gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise be to God. God. Our closing song is number 576, Canticle of the Sun. 576. But before we do that... Happy birthday to you, happy birthday to you, happy birthday, Father Ed, happy birthday to you. The heavens are telling the glory of God And all creation is shouting for joy Come dance in the forest, come play in the field And sing, sing to the glory of the Lord Praise for the Son, the bringer of day He carries the light of the Lord in His rays the moon and the stars who light up the way unto your throne. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Praise for the wind that blows through the trees, the sea's mighty storms, the gentlest breeze. They blow where they will, they blow where they please, to please the Lord. The heavens are telling the glory of God, and all creation is shouting for joy. Come dance in the forest, come play in the field, and sing, sing to the glory of the Lord. Let's play it again. Verse, verse.